Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So in the midst of the current crisis bringing the world to its knees, we have seen the good, the bad and the ugly when it comes to humanity. We have seen extraordinary acts of courage from healthcare workers and emergency services who have been putting their lives on the line to protect the community from harm. We have seen wonderful acts of charity from philanthropists the world over, whether it is from millionaires who are donating to various benevolence funds, to alcohol distilleries making hand sanitizer and giving it away to, for free, to your average person volunteering to do grocery shopping for the senior citizens on their block in order to prevent those who are the most vulnerable from potentially becoming sick. We have also seen appalling acts of greed in terms of people buying household goods in bulk and then selling it all online for grossly elevated prices. We have seen physical fights in shopping center aisles over who gets the last roll of toilet paper on the shelf. And we have seen acts of rank, tasteless political opportunism from the regressive left who, freaked out that their favorite causes are no longer in vogue, have sought to inject toxic, divisive identity politics into this crisis for their own ideological gratification. Let us not forget that COVID-19 is a gendered crisis. Mm -hmm. Nurses, nurse aides, teachers, child carers and early childhood educators, aged care workers and cleaners are mostly women. They are on the front line of this public health crisis and carry a disproportionate risk of being exposed to the virus. Among all of the good, the bad and the ugly, we have also seen the utterly colossally tone deaf. This originally came from celebrities who had a habit for a while there of posting videos of themselves in their multi-million dollar homes, enjoying the quarantine life with candles and expensive LED face masks, while ordinary people lose their jobs and struggle to feed their families. However, this latest bout of tone-deaf schlepping has come from a couple of Democratic politicians who, as members of the party that relentlessly but increasingly fallaciously touts itself as the party of the American worker, really should know better. I am talking, of course, about Nancy Pelosi and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Over the past week or so, both Nancy and Alexandria, or Red Cortez as I like to call her, have proven themselves not only so out of touch with the American people that it is laughable, but also at least a little bit stupid. And I don't normally fob off my ideological opponents as stupid, like I really try not to because I think it is a lazy argument, but in some circumstances it really is unavoidable because it's true. So as a sort of PSA, here are the four most recent examples of Nancy and Red's colossal foot in mouths to each that we can all collectively cringe over. I mean, there's nothing like a bit of SJW cringe to pass the time in lockdown, right? But if you are after another way to pass the time in lockdown, how about you also subscribe to my YouTube channel? I know some of you out there have watched two, three, maybe four, possibly even five of my videos and you haven't yet hit that subscribe button. So now is the perfect chance to do so. I do two videos a week and at least four live streams a month. So if you like my content, then please hit that subscribe button right now. I would love to have you. First, let's take Red Cortez. In bad news for tens of thousands of workers in the USA, the price of oil has plunged to historic lows. And by historic lows, I mean the price has dropped to negative dollars for the first time ever. This means, in simple terms, that oil producers have to pay people to take it off their hands and store it because that is cheaper than building more storage and or shutting down oil wells. This, of course, will lead to terrible financial insecurity and job loss for an awful lot of people who work in the oil industry and could significantly, if not permanently, damage an important segment of the US economy. On an employment level, it is, you know, bad news all round. Nevertheless, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, self-proclaimed defender of the meek and downtrodden, thought it was a good idea on April 20th to tweet this. You absolutely love to see it. This, along with record low interest rates, means it's the right time for a worker-led mass investment in green infrastructure to save our planet. <coughs> Needless to say, this tweet garnered an awful lot of negative attention. People pointing out the very human cost of job losses and economic uncertainty and decrying her for being an ideologue and using the beverage bug, as I like to call it, to prevent YouTube from deranking and demonetizing my videos as a perverse sort of springboard to gain clout for her Green New Deal. As such, she deleted the tweet. 
Never delete tweets if you can help it, people. It only serves to augment them further. Anyway, she replaced this rather tone-deaf tweet with this. This snapshot is being acknowledged as a turning point in the climate movement. Fossil fuels are in long-term structural decline. This, along with low interest rates, means it's the right time to create millions of jobs transitioning to renewable and clean energy. A key opportunity. Okay, so you can see there she has tried to turn down the really quite narky, gloating tenor of her original tweet with some fancy language about fossil fuels being in structural decline and some hastily concocted greeny rhetoric about jobs. Whatever. This did not stop people from flooding the replies with screenshots of her original distinctly Machiavellian tweet. Not very becoming from someone who's always going on about compassion and empathy, am I right? So, aside from the fact that she majorly put her foot in her mouth on the tone-deaf front, her assertion about investing in green energy is wrong. Like, totally wrong. Now is the absolute worst time to be investing in green energy. Why would anyone invest in what is now a vastly more expensive form of energy when oil prices are so cheap? For example, I mean, you really think your average consumer is going to go investing in fancy schmancy new electric cars when they can fill up their gas guzzlers for a low, low price? The anti-fossil fuel brigade, of which Red Cortez is chieftain, should be praying for massively high oil prices to incentivize people to look elsewhere for their energy needs. But then again, socialists don't actually understand incentive, they just think that the government should do everything, hence why Red Cortez probably thinks that a crash in oil prices will magically make her green dream happen. But then again, she does have an economics degree, a major indictment on Boston University, which is where she got her so-called qualification from. You don't have to study. Why do you keep saying I don't have to study? Because you go to BU. Nancy Pelosi is, in my opinion, one of the more despicable Democrats. From theatrically tearing up Donald Trump's State of the Union speech, even though it contained the names of the dead, to pointlessly pushing the impeachment hoax and the Russian hoax, she's proven that she cares much more about politics than she does about people. And it is this lack of care about people that must have enabled her to engage in this monumental display of what I like to call out-of-touchism. Uh, Speaker Pelosi, what have you found? What are you going to share with us from your home? Chocolate. Oh, wow. And this is, this is something you can get through the mail. Okay. Run out. Can I show, show you? Me. Yeah, absolutely. This is the episode of Cribs I never knew I needed. Oh, my. Wow. Other people in our family go for some other flavors, but chocolate and then we have some other chocolate here <laughs> and we just got it restocked with the ice cream uh, right for easter sunday because we were shall we say enjoying i don't know what i would have done if ice cream were not invented okay so at a time when millions of americans are literally starving losing their homes and jobs and waiting on welfare checks nancy pelosi queen of the democrats is showing off her twenty four thousand dollar fridge and what would be at least a couple of hundred dollars worth of ice cream packed inside it beggars belief that someone who has been in politics for like 500 years, not literally figuratively, and is a member of the party that constantly insists how much it allegedly loves poor people, would go on television and do something like that. But then again, what do you expect from the nouveau bourgeoisie? Let them eat cake. Back to Red Cortez. In true Bolshevik fashion, Red has called for a sort of workers' revolt when the US economy opens back up again. There's a lot that we could be doing right now, but ultimately, the, I think when we talk about this idea of reopening society, you know, only in America does the president, when the president tweets about liberation, does he mean go back to work? When we, you know, have this discussion about going, going back or reopening, I think a lot of people should just say, no, we're not going back to that. We're not going back to working 70 hour weeks just so that we could put food on the table and not even feel any sort of semblance of security in our lives. Now I'm not going to stand here and say I don't know where she's coming from. Of course I do. I know exactly what she's talking about. I understand that it is not a pleasant existence to work 70 hours a week in menial jobs that you hate in order to put food on the table and still not be able to make ends meet. I also understand how a person can become completely trapped in that terrible cycle and the pain and resentment that can generate. I get it, it sucks. 
but red. Most people can't afford not to go to work. The people Red is talking about, which I would say very much characterizes a lot of the people in her district in New York, can't actually afford not to go to work in some sort of great ideological protest to unseat the bourgeoisie and have the proletariat reign supreme. And the thing is, she's not actually kidding when she says stuff like this. I mean, sure, she's being a little bit hyperbolic, but as a democratic socialist, she would absolutely be all for a kind of mass strike of that kind. The thinking is that if enough people do it and join the cause, then something has to change, right? Well, in thinking this way, Red simply reveals her privilege and her complete disconnect from the working class who she claims to represent. Most people are not in the position to just refuse to go to work and hope that things change. The people who can afford to do that are generally university students with parents who can support them when they run out of money. Not the single parent with four kids having to work three jobs just to afford food. And aside from anything else, she just proved a truth universally acknowledged. Communists are lazy. Why do you think they advocate for a four day working week? Because I'm literally a communist. And finally, Fancy Nancy. There's a lot of talk lately about social distancing and maintaining proper hygiene practices. Staying one and a half meters away from people, washing your hands frequently, and not touching your eyes, mouth, or nose. All good things that can certainly stop illness from spreading. Now, you'd think that some of the first people to publicly practice all of this should be our elected officials, right? I mean, part of their job is setting a good example for the general public. Well, evidently, somebody forgot to tell Nancy. Very important piece of legislation. So we come to the floor. Very important piece of legislation. 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 That's really fancy, Nancy. And quite a juxtaposition to Donald Trump. I mean, he's a germaphobe from way back and is more than happy to publicly uphold those practices, even in jest. You'll notice I was not here over the weekend. I think this is the part that we really need to take personal responsibility for. Saturday, I had a little low-grade fever. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, actually, probably a GI thing. But, you know, I'm meticulous. I'm a physician. I looked it up. I ended up piggy bank. I'm from Walter Reed, so I got a test late Saturday night, and I'm negative. I stayed home another day just to... <laughs> Thank just, you for saying that. Yeah, yeah, just to make sure. That's how we protect one another. Well, there you have it. Red Cortez and Fancy Nancy up to their usual tricks. But did we really expect anything better from them? If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.